This is the video for 9.1. Uh, the objective is to graph quadratic functions of the form y equals ax squared and y equals ax squared plus c. So we did a little bit of experimenting with Desmos yesterday so you know what some of these things do, like what this a term should do and what this c term should do. But we'll talk about those things and then we'll get going. So, uh, review from chapter 8. A quadratic polynomial. What is that? Quadratic, this just means that the biggest exponent is 2. Um, the degree of a, poly, a quadratic polynomial is 2. Polynomial just means many terms, so it could be a trinomial or a binomial or a monomial, whatever it might be. But quadratic means that the biggest exponent is 2. Uh, so the parent function or the, uh, the simplest quadratic that you can graph would be f of x equals x squared or y equals x squared. This is just called function notation over here. That's just a fancy way of saying y. But what we're going to look to do is just graph what this simplest quadratic should be like. Until we start putting in a, a little bit more of a complicated equation, the vertex or the, the minimum or maximum of the graph will be at x equals 0. Well, if you plug uh, 0 into x squared, you get 0 times 0, which is 0. So we know that the first point in this parent function is going to be at 0, 0. Then these types of graphs have symmetry. So if you put 1 in, 1 squared, 1 times 1 is 1. If you put negative 1 in, negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. So at negative 1 and at positive 1, you end up with a 1 either way. So with these quadratic graphs, uh, 1 squared will give you the same as negative 1 squared. 2 squared will give you the same as negative 2 squared. So 2 squared is 4, 2 times 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 as well. And then I'll go one more. Uh, I'll put those on the graph here. Oh, it looks like I don't have a, a bigger graph to plot these. But I'll go one more just to show you. Uh, 3 squared is 9, which is the same as negative 3 squared. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So what you get is this U-shaped graph. And what we call that is a parabola. That was a word that you probably saw in Desmos yesterday. This is called a parabola. And then we talked a little bit yesterday online about how uh, you can move this parabola around, you can flip it upside down into a frowny face, all those types of things. So we'll talk about those as we go here. Then we can talk about the effect of A and C. A has two important properties. If A is positive, these two are related to each other. If A is positive, then the parabola will open up. If A is negative, then the parabola will open down. It'll be a frowny face. Okay, right, so it's either a smiley face or a frowny face, depending on if A is positive or negative. Uh, then these two are related as well. If A is greater than 1, then the parabola will be skinnier uh, or narrower than y equals x squared. If A is less than 1, Really, this should be the absolute value. If a is a fraction between 0 and 1, then the parabola is going to be wider. So if the a value is like 1 third or 1 half, it's going to get wider. Okay, then the c term, what the c term will do, uh, it's going to be shifting the parabola up or down. So if c is positive, it's going to shift the whole graph up. If c is negative, it's going to shift the whole graph down. So with a and with c, you might get something that's opening up or down. You might get something that's narrow or wide. And you get, you'll get something that's either shifted up or shifted down. So sometimes that's what you're going to look at for your problems. So problem set one, describing the effect of a and c. Um, we're going to consider this equation here, y equals 3x squared minus 2. Does it open up or down? 
This number in front of x squared is positive, so this is going to open up. Is it wider, narrower, or the same width as y equals x squared? Since 3 is bigger than 1, this is going to be narrower than y equals x squared. What effect does the negative 2 have? Well, since it's a negative 2, that's our c term. This is a, and this is c. Since c is negative 2, the whole graph is going to shift down 2 units compared to y equals x squared or 3x squared. Okay, we'll do another one like that. For this one, our a term is negative 1 third. Our c term is positive 1. Does it open up or down? Well, this one opens down since our a term is a negative 1 over 3. Um, 1 third is between 0 and 1, which makes this graph wider than y equals x squared. And then the plus 1 at the end is going to move the whole graph up 1 unit. Moving on. Uh, vertex. So the vertex is either the, the very top of the parabola or the very bottom of the parabola. So parabolas that open down are going to have a maximum. Parabolas that open up are going to have a minimum. Uh, so parabolas that open down, they get to a point where they're never going to get any taller than this point right here. So that would, we'd call that the maximum value. Uh, parabolas that open up, they, go to, they get to a point where they're not going to get any smaller than that point at the bottom, making it a minimum. All the other values you could plug in for x will be bigger than that minimum. Okay? So a couple of things you need to know. Domain is going to be what values of x can you use. Okay? Domain is talking about values of x. It's always going to be the same thing for parabolas. When you're plugging something into an x squared graph, there's no numbers that are not allowed. So this is going to be all real numbers. There's a way to simplify that or use a symbol for it. It's like an R with two stems. Okay? That's always going to be the answer for domain. Because there's, it doesn't matter what x you put in, you'll be able to get a y answer out. Range is a little trickier. Um, range is talking about the values of y. Okay. So it's important to know how big or how small y could possibly be. So this, is, this maximum is also known as our vertex. And the, the, the coordinates of this point are 0, 3. So what I know is that my value of y right here is 3, and every, number, uh, every other number on the graph will be less than 3. 3 is as big as it gets. So here's how you can write something for range y is going to be, no matter what, less than or equal to 3. It's either 3, we're at the very top, or it's less than 3. This here is a maximum, not a minimum. Okay? So with maximums, you get y equals less, or y is less than or equal to a number. Okay? This one over here is a minimum. The vertex is at positive 1, negative 1. So negative 1 is that y value that I'm looking at right here. Since this is a minimum, that means negative 1 is as small as the y's can get. Any other value that's on this red graph, will be the y value will be bigger than negative 1. It's never going to get smaller than that again. So the way we say that, y is always greater than or equal to negative 1. You look for the smallest it can be, y has to always be bigger than or equal to that, what, that minimum. So with minimums, you use a greater than or equal sign. Okay? Just note one more time, the domain will always be all real numbers.
Okay, again, you can use this symbol to say all real numbers. All right, so then what we're going to talk about last is just plugging some numbers in into a table to make our graph. So this one says, to graph parabolas, we'll make a table of values and plot these points. The most important point that you can find, uh, it goes in the middle of the table, is the vertex. For now, the vertex will always be when x equals plug in 0 for x. For now. Tomorrow we might say something different. Uh, so the vertex of this graph, the one that we're trying to uh, graph right now, so here's my x side of my t table, here's my y side, here's the one I'm trying to graph, 2x squared. For now, for today, we're always going to plug in 0 for x, and that will give us our y value. So this is 2 times 0 squared, which is 0. So we know that at 0... Uh, at x equals 0, y has to equal 0. Okay. Then I'm going to start to plug in things on either side of that vertex. So 1 and negative 1. They should have the same answer. 2 times 1 squared is 2 times 1, which is 2. Uh, 2 times negative 1 squared is 2 times positive 1, which is 2. So at 1, we need to be at 2. And at negative 1, we need to be at 2. Okay, we always plot at least five points with these. So at two, um, we're going to be at a two times two squared. Two squared is four. Four times two is eight. Negative two. Uh, two times negative two squared. Negative two times negative two is still positive four. Times two is still eight. So at two, we need to be up at eight. And at negative 2, we need to be up at 8. And now, since we have five dots, we can draw our U shape. Okay. We'll answer some questions about this one. The domain is always the same answer. It's all real numbers. The range is talking about the Y values. Right here, we have a minimum. This is the smallest that the graph ever gets at 0, 0. So, when we have a minimum, we have y is always greater than or equal to that minimum. So, the smallest y can ever get is 0 for this one. So, y has to be greater than or equal to 0. I just told you what the vertex was. It's at 0, 0. Why is this graph narrower? Uh, because the equation that we're graphing is 2x squared, and this value a is greater than 1. Okay, a is 2. Why does it open up? Because a is positive. So now that you know uh, what a positive graph should look like and a negative graph should look like, you can look really quickly at the equation and, and make sure that your answer makes sense. Okay, 1 half x squared. All right, so we'll do that, do the same thing. We're going to do zero, zero, uh, zero first. Uh, and what happens is uh, you get one half times zero squared. One half times zero is zero. So our vertex, again, is at zero, zero. It's not always when x equals zero, but today it will always be when x equals zero. Okay, now I might use some even numbers here. Um, it, I'm just going to pick... 2 and negative 2. I want to use even numbers to avoid decimals because I'm going to be taking half of whatever I get here. So uh, 1 half times 2 squared. Well, 2 squared is 4, and then 1 half of 4 is 2. Same thing with negative 2. 1 half times negative 2 squared. Negative 2 squared is 4, but half of that uh, is uh, 2. So at 2, we're at 2. At negative 2, we're at 2. Remember, we, we have a 1 half x squared here. Remember, this number is between 0 and 1, so we should have something that's wider when we're all said and done. Okay? I'm going to pick another set of evens, 4 and negative 4. 1 half of 4 squared is 1 half of 16, which is 8. Same, you get the exact same thing when you plug in negative 4. 
4. Half of 16, which is 8. So at 4, we should be at 8. And at negative 4. So you can see our graph is wider than our original x squared graph. Okay? The domain is something you should never get wrong, all real numbers. We have another instance where we have a minimum. So we're going to say y is always bigger or equal to some number, and that's this number here. y is always going to be at least equal to or larger than 0. Okay. All right. Uh, and then the questions here I already talked about. It's wider because 1 third is a, and that's a fraction. Um, and it's, it opens up because a is positive. Uh, why do we choose 2 and 4 for our x values? Just so that we wouldn't get decimals in our table. It, 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 you, sometimes you're going to get decimals in your table. It happens. But we try to choose x values that help us not run into negatives. Okay? All right, let's look at negative 3x squared plus 1. Okay, so we know that it should be narrower than x squared because 3 is bigger than 1. We know it should open down because the uh, a is negative 3. And what effect does the plus 1 have on the graph? The vertex is going to be moved up 1. Okay, so let's make our table. We're still going to plug in 0 here, but something a little bit different is going to happen. We get negative 3 times 0 squared plus 1. So we get 0 times, or 0 squared is 0. 0 times negative 3 is 0. So I have 0 from just this part. This is 0 uh, plus 1. So it's, this time our vertex is going to be at 0, 1. Remember that we should get something that's going to open down. I don't have fractions here, so I'm not going to worry about picking special numbers. I'm just going to go one, to, one step away from the vertex to each side should be symmetric. So... This one down here, negative 3 times 1 squared plus 1. Uh, from 1 squared, you get 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So you should also get negative 2 here. So at 1, we're going to be at negative 2. And at negative 1, we're going to be negative 2. So I should have a skinny upside down graph. Uh, then I'll do negative 2 and 2. They should have the same, they will have the same answer because they're the same distance from the center. Uh, negative 3 times 2 squared plus 1. So 2 squared is 4. Um, 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 1 is negative 11. So I should get negative 11 here as well. Uh, so it looks like I'll be just off the graph, but that's okay. At 2, I'm going to be down here at negative 11. At negative 2, I'll be down here at negative 11. So here's my graph. Again, I'm looking for five dots. Okay, the domain is all real numbers. Don't get that wrong. Range is always y, and then either greater than or less than or equal to something. Okay, this time we have a maximum. Okay, and it's at 0, 1. The y value is 1. Okay, so since it's a maximum, all the y's are going to be less than or equal to that maximum. And it's whatever that y value of the vertex is. So it's 1. The vertex is 0, 1. Okay. All right, so we are going to uh, say that that was our last example like that. Um, I do want to go down and skip to this one here. So that was just, I, I skipped just one more graph. Um, I want to go down to this one, comparing widths of parabolas. This one says, what is the order from widest to narrowest? So uh, we're looking at A values of the graphs of these quadratic functions. So widest to narrowest, right? Remember that as A gets bigger, what happens is uh, you get, end up with a skinnier graph. So the, the, the higher number that A is, the narrower it will be. So I want the widest graph. So my options are x squared 
uh, oh, sorry, negative 4x squared, 14x squared, and x squared, okay? I want the smallest number for a. If I want to start with the widest, this is going to be the smallest a to the largest a. So a is just that coefficient in front of the uh, x squared. Okay, so the smallest one that I see is x squared here. So this one would have to be like the, the widest. That would have to go first. The next biggest number is 4, even though it's negative. Uh, and then 14 is the biggest, which means it should be the narrowest. So if I'm putting these in order again, I would put f of x equals x squared would be first. f of x equals negative 4x squared would be second f of x equals 14x squared would be third. So I wanted to show you a problem like that before we wrapped up the notes. But, but now you should be able to try the 9-1 assignment. You can get started on that uh, and let your teacher know when you have questions. Thanks for watching.